I thought we were the protectors of truth. Democrats, Republicans, you all lie. We, a small band of survivors, are on our way to the Steel City to find the resistance. Join us. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance with Senior Airman Ward Miller and the ironclad voice of Pittsburgh Hutch Jr. laying down verbal C4 to blow away the lies and the political tomfoolery. Your papers have been cleared. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Steel City Resistance. Thank you, Mr. Byer Brown. My name is Hutch Jr., and I'm located deep down in the bunker in the city of Pittsburgh. I'm Ward Miller, also in the city of Pittsburgh here on Mission Control, and <laughs> it's one of them weeks. Uh, Hutch and I are both uh, got the ick, and so uh, you, you may hear some coughing and snorting and sneezing and breezing and whatnot during the show tonight, and we're going to apologize ahead of time because we both know we have these really terrible head colds, and uh, yeah, so there's that. There is, and I don't know what's going on with the Ustream here, but it doesn't seem to be operating. I think there's some problems with Ustream. Hopefully the recording will be uh, no problem, and uh, that'll work out well for the video segment because it's too late. Yeah, we're uh, we're both down here and uh, kind of sick, so if the voices sound a little uh, a little off, that's why, but we're dedicated enough that we decided to, to drive on anyway, so... Hey, it's uh, episode number 110, Ward. That's uh, not bad. I mean, we, we just kind of did this on a whim, and, and we really haven't missed. We might have missed one or two weeks, but not uh, not very many. No, it's actually 109 more shows than I figured it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually figured we'd do one or two, and people would go, are you really kidding me? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's hard to, like, the, the types of shows that we were doing uh, when we uh, decided to launch this project uh the politics didn't really fit in those venues i mean it was kind of odd you know a little bit of awkward sometimes if you're going and alien oh, yeah. especially like you you were doing a comedy show and and at the time i was doing a technology show and you really couldn't you know i mean of course you know with a comedy show it's easier to talk about politics because they're all clients <laughs> but you know with, with a technology show it just wasn't there yeah, but anyway, so we stuck with it, and I'm glad we did. I've uh, I've learned a lot, and I have. Uh, well, one of the things I've learned is I don't know what in the hell is going on in Washington, but we reported extensively during the Benghazi incident about uh, the AFRICOM commander being General uh, Carter Ham being relieved of his command, and, and there was eyewitnesses on the scene, and, and he was whisked away, and this, that, and the other thing, and... I don't know what the story is in between then and now, but General Ham is still the AFRICOM commander. Uh, well, yeah, and it's important that we write, you know, what was said. However, we, in our defense, I'm going to say, you know, we uh, did some check. I mean, yeah, we took multiple well, sources. I mean, it wasn't. Yeah, just... it was. It wasn't like what we heard from this one guy who said. You know, I mean, it, it was all over the place. It and, was. And in fact, it was so pervasive that we felt as though we had a report on it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's uh, it's just something the way that the way that happens. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to put that out there because it's not uh, not as we. I I really don't know how it is. I mean, I I don't know what to say at this point, other than he is still the. The commander until spring sometime so uh there it is go uh search it out yourself i have and there's like conflicting reports and pentagon saying this and this guy saying that and uh i don't know but anyway good man's still in the position so that's good now, outstanding yeah now the the uh state of our media today i've often said you know man why doesn't a a rich conservative or a conglomerate of rich conservatives why do we put up with these networks that are so skewed to the left and and we have one we have fox news that's so easy uh to target and they do it daily i mean there's got to be some more people out there with some ambition that could create another 
network. And, I mean, that's never going to happen. I, I, I've been waiting for that for 20 years. And uh, it just doesn't seem to. I mean, thank goodness Fox is there. And, and now we have the new media, which is good. But the market is taking care of this raggedy-ass left-wing media. Well, I mean, and, and that's how capitalism works, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You know, that's why... Uh, the, damn, it took a long time, though, man. Holy smoke, it yeah, took a long time. of course it does. But, I mean, <laughs> it takes time. You know, and I think what a lot of it, what happens is even the lefties start watching, you know, CNN, MSNBC, and they start going, you know what? The, the, these people are, are, are think I believe this. And it's not saying that they're jumping ship and they're going from, uh, I'm a avid, you know, rabid CNN follower, watcher, or whatever, and I'm going to jump right to Fox News. What it probably is, is they have become so disenchanted with the way that the media talks to them that they just said, you know what, I don't need this. Well, when you and listen to and, it. And are opting for Big Bang Theory versus yeah. Soledad O'Brien or Piers Morgan or any of the other jackasses that they have on, on CNN or MSNBC. Well, these arguments that the left uh, puts out in the uh, very reliable lapdogs in the media uh, parrot, they have to rely on you being stupid. And I think it's... it's uh, Especially with social media. Now with Twitter and Facebook and things, you can't get away from either side. So you're going to see it. Oh, absolutely. But, you and, know, I, and I'll help. The, the, the beauty of social media is you can, you can tune it, right? You can, say, you can actually dial in and say how much, you know, political stuff I want and how much, you know, entertainment type stuff I want and how much just – benign insanity I want and you can you control that so, you know so if you have somebody you know like Hutch and I who, who you know are, are fairly conservative and you want a fairly conservative viewpoint you'd follow us on Twitter on Facebook on whatever and then versus CNN who just takes the entire pipe and crams the entire pipe with crap yeah and 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 you know it it's one of the things that I just saw that, that I feel is so ridiculous is that what's that guy, that guy's name? The, the sec, the Senator from uh, Jersey uh, Menendez. Yeah. Menendez. Menendez. What, Menendez. All right. He gets busted. Yeah. Going to uh, South America. To, uh, correct me if I'm wrong at any point. He's going to South America. He went to the Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. Okay. Dominican Republic on the taxpayer's dime. To bang little girls, and when I say little girls, I mean under the age of eighteen. It was actually he probably had taxpayer money, but it was uh, on his biggest donor's dime. Who's uh, okay. who's like a fraudulent? He's a fraudulent medical something. Okay, in any everybody's case. getting busted. Put it that way. Yeah, in any case, it doesn't matter who paid for. I mean, the thing is, he's still your senator, and he still committed a felony. Here's the part that I don't that that really pisses me off. CNN reported on this, on this felony. Yeah, like six weeks later or something. Six weeks later yeah. and only spoke about it six times. It's unbelievable. In a month. It's six a, times. How many times now, have you gone up to somebody with a story that we are well-versed in and they don't know what the hell you're talking about? Oh. It well, happens uh, to me all the time. Yeah, so anyway, back to my story. So in... In a, in a one month period, six weeks, CNN talked about uh, Menendez six times in six weeks. Now, this guy was going to the Dominican Republic and banging little girls. Yeah, it was sickening. Okay. I mean, the, the, now, the madams were saying, like, like, he always wants the newest and the freshest ones. The yeah. Now, now, conversely, you know, because we show both sides of the story here, Marco Rubio took a drink of water. And CNN reported on that 122 times in a 24-hour period. A guy gets a drink of water. Yeah, gets it was 122, bad. Gets it brought up 122 times in a 24-hour period. Right. But yet, this senator, who's who's committing one of the most heinous acts you can you can imagine, gets mentioned six times in six weeks. Yeah, What's think, wrong with this? I picture? think MSNBC added 155 times. I mean, it was uh, really oh, good. Rubio, yeah. I mean, both of them are. I mean, you know, 
And then you have Wolf Blitzer going, do you think this is going to do in Rubio's career? Yeah. Really? For dr getting a drink of water? You know, when talking makes you thirsty, you know, and, and big, big bright lights make you thirsty. Yeah. You know, but the market's the market's good because Soledad O'Brien got fired. That's like the that's good things like that. It just uh, it makes you happy when you when you see that at least the market's doing something. Well, and did, did you see who they're who they're going to replace her with? No idea. That ugly ass Kyle Joy Bear. From the the redhead from the View. Oh yeah, she's real newsworthy. Yeah. What I thought she was going to current. No, well apparently she was going to go to current. And then uh, he got it got sold to Al Jazeera. So you know, I guess she she that didn't feel work like for her. She didn't want to relocate to Yemen, so uh, she decided to go uh, go she, to CNN. It's it's the next you know ne the closest thing to a terrorist network that she can work on. She'd look good in a burqa. Uh, she'd look <laughs> outstanding in a burqa. Uh, she, she, she's burqa. She's burqa ready if I've ever seen one. Now, Rush Limbaugh came out this week, and he uh, he started talking about the sequestration and the big hoopla over it, and he actually said that he was ashamed to be an American, or ashamed of his country, rather. And I started listening to what he was what he was saying, and I can't remember the percentage, but this sequestration for this year is, it's going to hurt the Department of Defense because of the way that it's set up. But as far as the country as a whole, all it is is a cut in the growth of the spending. And it's like, we're still going to spend more next year than we are this year. And he said, and he's, when you think about it, Ward, for 20 years they've been doing this. They've been doing the same thing. They come up and they kill Grandpa, and they come out, and America falls for it time and time again. And there's some people out there saying that maybe nobody's going to fall for it this time. Well, in fact, there there was a thing that I posted on on our Facebook page. It says, sequestration is a fancy word for holding America's military hostage in order to pressure Republicans into yet another tax hike. Yeah, and I mean, it's, uh, it's going like that's this. that's what they're doing, right? Because they're, they're, they're painting, I mean, it, it's the same thing that we've said a million times. They're painting the picture of, yeah. well, no, it's not this time they're not pushing grandma off the off the mountain, you know, in a wheelchair. Now they're they're holding a gun to the military's head saying, "Hey, the, you know what? The military's not going to be able to protect you if we don't if we don't raise taxes and pay these guys." And you know the, the on the other side because there's two sides of it. There's a the defense side and then there's the other side, the discretionary fund side. The president with a straight face and he's the fourth or fifth president to do this gets up there and, and goes down this long litany of things that are going to happen if if his plan, and they're also pushing that it's the Republicans' plan, and there's evidence that it's not. But he goes right down, and there's going to be no air traffic controllers, there's going to be no police, no first responders, no teachers, no food, no peanut butter, no jelly, no nothing. You know, and it's just, uh, and that's the part that he's ashamed of, and I am too, and it's like, this country it does nothing common sense related when it comes to the government. I mean, they're they're just well, addicted. They're they're junkies to the spending. Well, and, and the thing is, what I love is that they said there's not going to be any first responders. There's not going to be any police. There's not going to be any firemen. There's not going to be. Here's the here's the point. The federal government doesn't pay the police. Department. Right. You're talking about the D.C. cops maybe or the federal agents, but not the. Yeah. I mean, it, it may impact the FBI, it may impact the CIA. And when you're talking it's, about them, it's not going to impact your local police force because their their money either comes from the city or the state or the county, right? It doesn't come from the federal government. The federal government doesn't pay one of our police officers. Well, see, the ridiculousness of the whole entire thing is every single branch of government needs a cut. But they don't need to cut like this. They need to say... Somebody in Washington, they, they need to get together some adults and say, we got to lose this much money. And they got to... Uh, well, they, they, they have to find a bunch of adults in D.C. They got to divide it up in between the agencies and said each agency, if they said to the DOD right now, you got to cut so-and-so percent, do you think they'd be doing it the way they're going to by furloughing everybody? No. 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 They would, like, put one less shit house on every freaking aircraft carrier or something. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you, you make a... You, 
you you make intelligent That's right. choices. You make intelligent cuts. Now, do I think that, that cuts are necessary? Yes. Hell I yes, do. and in defense. And in defense. Yes. And, and everywhere. We need to lean Six Sigma, get a little smarter, start with some better business practices, and uh, see what happens. But the the whole farce, and and the sad thing, Ward, is when you see the guy on the street that's so damn dumb that he just believes everything that these reporters tell him and these politicians tell him. And it just becomes, like, I saw a very uh, unsettling poll, and I, I don't really have a whole lot of faith in polls, but it, it said that whenever asked if the, if the government needed to be cut, everybody said, yeah. But when you started asking people about individual programs and agencies, the only one they said to cut was foreign aid. All the rest of them, they thought that you should keep the same. They're well, not, they're not foolish. The, well, that's extremely foolish, but... I agree to with that to a point. Now, he, here's the thing that I don't agree with. We're borrowing money from China to turn around and hand it to countries such as Egypt that don't fucking like us. No. That we're handing it to Saudi Arabia. That we're hand well, so we're not giving Saudi that much money, but uh, Pakistan. We're giving Pakistan aircraft carriers full of money. Yeah. Well, and, Saudi Arabia and, too, but it's just an oil revenues. But yeah, I mean, they're actually we're actually getting something from them. Pakistan, we're, the only thing that Pakistan exports is terrorists, and but yeah, we keep giving them money because they say yeah, we're we're helping you guys out. We're we're behind you. War on terror. Woohoo! Yeah, we're there. They got a nice com they got the a nice convertible coming out next month. The, the, the Pakistani convertible. Yeah, it's gonna be nice. <laughs> I just had to do that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So, but, but I mean, hell, they, they housed Bin Laden for how many years? Oh yeah, they killed and, their and own. They uh, killed their own prime minister. Yeah, we're looking for him. We're looking for him. Yeah, we we, we can't find him. I, I I don't know what you're talking about. They killed that woman, the prime minister or president, whatever she was, Booty or Buta or whatever. I think she was Huma Abedin's cousin or something. Yeah, I'm sure she was. <laughs> hey, uh, so anyway, we'll be paying attention to the sequestration. By the time the next show rolls around, we'll be probably won't have any electric because there probably won't be any federal subsidies to, you know, keep the telephone poles up or whatever. So we might not we might have to run on battery power if there's any batteries left. But uh, anyway, we'll see what happens next week. Uh, uh, just just real quick, did did you see that thing I posted on on uh, our Facebook page? Probably. It, it was called Chip Pelosi says. Yeah. Yeah, I, and, I saw that and elsewhere. And the one that I, I had it, that I have to give a shout out to is, and this is quoting Nancy. I don't think that we should cut congressional pay. I think we oh, should yeah. respect the work we do. I think that it's necessary for us to have the dignity of a job that we are that we have rewarded. She's like a multi-millionaire. Her freaking yeah. her freaking husband owns a football team. And she says, no, no, no. We, we or can't. no, a football league, not a team. I mean, it's a failed league. But, yeah, the, but, the arena league. One of, the, one of those things that didn't work too well. Uh, but I, uh, a friend of mine developed a chip. Uh, if you have a big HDTV that's like, what is it, 1020 or 1080 DPI, the real big ones. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, 1080p. When, when it's in uh, HD mode and it's real bright, it's a chip. That like, cause we watch a lot of news over here, and and you know you get in inter no. you get interviews, and if you want to get some brain damage, watch one of those big HD TVs, and the full face picture of Nancy Pelosi comes up in HD. She has so many terrain features on her face that my buddy had to develop this chip, that if she comes on, it goes back to regular definition. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's up today. I, maybe it's me being sick. It, it might be the medication you're on. But, uh, I don't know. No, I'm not on any medication to cough drop. But uh, I was like, I said that at a party one time, and there was like a real big Democrat guy that was there. He was like, <laughs> he was stunned. I thought it was funny as hell. Uh, it looks like we're having some problems, and I don't know the origin, because that's the other thing about the news anymore. You don't get the whole story. They'll tell you, 25 youths beat up another youth, and they won't say that the 25 youths were all 17-year-old black kids, and the other kid was eight, with the other guy was 65, you know, and a Mexican guy or whatever. They, you know, they they'll never bring the whole thing out. 
But it, it seems like a, a, a round of tuberculosis has uh, broken out in Los Angeles. And with the d- demographics of Los Angeles, that makes you wonder if that's immigrants. Because this is one of the most serious things about illegal immigration right here. Is we've nailed a lot of diseases in this country and in this hemisphere. But there's some, some berry berry and shit out there. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, we inoculate against a lot of this stuff like TB and, and polio. Yeah. And... and Small um, small pox. Small pox, yes. and, and you name it, you know, because and, and we've eradicated, you know, small pox and whatnot because of this. Uh, but then you have this, you know, I mean, for all intents and purposes, Mexico's, I mean, it, is so poor. It's it's a third world country. Oh, sure. I and, mean, you go further south than that. I mean, it's not and, just Mexicans. Yeah. Well, no, but my point is. You go down there and some of those. Not being, they're not being immunized against right. anything. And some of those countries down there, so a mosquito. Down there just a, petri dish. a mosquito lasts for 10 years. He don't die in the wintertime. You know, that sucker gets big. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, we'll have to watch that because that's. Uh, and, 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 yeah, well, the thing is, it, it's not just that it was TB, it was yeah. drug resistant TB. Oh, really? Yeah. That it, It's not. It's not going, you know. It the, probably uh, was. It probably was immigrants then. They probably. It's probably the fifth or sixth strain of it. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, what, you know, because I I'm not a virologist right. or whatever, so I'm not sure how how it spreads or how whatever. But the the article that I had read said that it was drug resistant TB. Jeez, yeah, it's bad. It's not good at all. We'll have to keep our eye on that and see if they uh, finally, it'll probably take two weeks before they say they were from Honduras or something, uh, illegally. Uh, but it, it seems like we're... we're. But it's okay because they've now been documented. Yeah, and they'll be citizens by May. Uh, but it, the, the disparity between the way the left is and the way the president is and the administration and the things they do, you know, the way they're perceived... And the things they do, we just sent 300 more troops to Niger in Africa to set up a drone station. Uh, And he did use the War Powers Act. It wasn't like, you know, usually when there's a War Powers Act, it's like on the news. And they say, hey, Mr. Speaker, you know, they they go through all the machinations of of doing this uh, parliamentarily. Yeah. This was just like a, a, a freaking instant message or something. Yeah. yeah. By the way, we're going to send 300 troops to Niger. You got they any problem, problem with that? that? Yeah. Right, gone. Exactly, man. I mean, and then the whole thing in, in this country, I don't know if you've been paying attention, but uh, uh, with the drones, Rand Paul's not letting that go about, about drones in, in the United States. And, and I, I'm, 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 I'm with it. I'm 100% with it. If it's in this country, send a squad down there. You know what I mean? Send well, somebody and police them up. Well, that's the thing. It should be policed. The, the the U.S. military shouldn't be enforcing laws with drone strikes. They shouldn't be enforcing laws, period. Exactly. Uh, but much less with drone strikes. And, you know, the I, I don't understand what their, what Obama's Who knows? thrill is with these, um, with these drones. Uh, I mean, we had a story last week where uh, they created a, a, a an award that was higher than the bronze star to give to drone pilots. And I think that that's ridiculous because, you know, with, did we actually do know, a story on that? No, I, I think it, I don't think it made the cut. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's explain it to the people because I forgot all about that story. And that story pisses me off because it just takes a certain metal that I might have and just like makes it all low. You know, that, that these guys, they're not even in country. A lot of them. A lot of them are in, like, I'm not going to say where. A lot of them are different places. And they do this remotely, very remotely. Yeah, thousands of miles By satellite. Away. Yeah. And they're, they're kicked off with their tennis shoes on and eating Cheetos. And this award that they can get that nobody, I mean, I, I'm not saying anything. They're great soldiers or airmen or whatever they are. But uh, it's different when you take a medal that you're going to give them. There's In the military, there's precedence of medals all the services there's a certain order that you wear them 
and the higher up and the closer to the heart that you wear them, the higher ranking or higher precedence, like the Medal of Honor goes around your neck. That's the highest medal there is. And then it goes back and back and back and down lower and down lower and lower. Well, they're making this uh, Atari medal, whatever it is, PS3 medal, PS4, whatever, and making it higher than a bronze star. And, and that, that, that means it's right because, under a silver star. The, and the thing is, the bronze star it is awarded to pe- to people in combat. You got actually in the in the in the dirt. You got to be fight. you got to be in the combat zone. And there's two different types. There's there's a bronze star medal, being involved in the operation and did something good, and there's a bronze star with valor, and that's when you're in the dirt and the bullets are flying. So if you get it with valor. That's what that means. Silver Star, I don't think you can get a Silver Star without Valor. I think that has to be. I, I, I know, I know that's true. Because we even had people, I've even known people that were in firefights and got Bronze Stars and couldn't get a Silver Star. Just because they, they're, they're very rare. I mean, they're, uh, you got you to gotta do something that involves a lot of people. And, and, and you should. You know, that, that's one of the Absolutely. things. Absolutely. That's one of the things about medals and, and honors. And, and and that's why everybody's and complaining. All these guys are complaining like, hey, you know, you already did that with some of the lower medals where everybody well, and their mother has one. But my point is, Hutch, these guys aren't fight, facing combat. Right, right. Hey, I agree you with know, you. They, they shouldn't. But there's I mean, enough. There's enough of those. They should be identified. And say, okay, yeah. you know, I was part of this battalion or, or this squadron of fighters or whatever. That's all well and good. And if you want to even give them a, a, a little badge that says I was a member of the, you know, 363rd Bomber Squadron, great. Or give but, them something that you give everybody else. Give but, them an Army Commendation Battle. You know, there's... Or, or yeah, or an Air Force Commendation Battle. Whatever. You don't, you don't give them... A, a, a medal because all you do is demean the people that's right that already had the, the and you know that, you, it, that had gotten that awarded during combat and you know what you end up with you end up with generals like general petraeus who stands up there and has got every feasible badge accruement ribbon medal possible he looks like douglas macarthur and he had one combat tour you know, or he started his combat tour as a two-star general that was the first combat he saw was a, as a two-star general, 101st Airborne Division, division commander, guaranteed he had a personal security detail that would take out the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, so the man wasn't in that much of danger, but he ends up with the whole rack. I mean, I'm sure you've seen him in uniform. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's what you end up getting. And you look at the Marine Corps, not so much. <laughs> No, the Marine Corps, you could do the twenty. Time, the only, to be honest with you, the only, uh, the only awards I've ever seen on anybody in the Marine Corps, are are Purple Hearts. Well, they have some, but they're not nothing like, uh, nothing like the the Army and the Air Force. I mean, we got a. Well, the, the Navy has quite a few though. I never really saw a whole lot of Navy guys dressed up. Yeah, the, the I just Navy haven't been has... around them. Navy has quite. I mean, especially if you get up into admirals and rear admirals. Oh yeah, they have quite a few. But you know, the 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 local, you know, the low level grunts, they don't have that many. Especially the Marines. You got to be like a E no, seven. No. <laughs> yeah, it, you, or be shot. Yeah, you know or I mean? be in combat. Right? They have combat related medals. They have combat related medals, and they, and the Purple Heart is the 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 most common Marine medal there is. That's that's the medal you don't want. No. Uh. That's the one that you have to get wounded to get that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, wounded in combat, which is why those people are screwed down at Fort Hood. By these people calling it a workplace violence, they're not getting their Purple Hearts that they damn well deserve. They were shot. Well, they were shot in combat. Damn it! Absolutely, and it's and it's not only that. It's because of the way it's classified. They're not getting you know any. Uh, you know, if they can't re-enlist and they're not able to, to fulfill it, they're getting kicked out. Yeah, they, they, they should make whatever. It was, it, because it wasn't a, you know, like you said, it, because it wasn't a work, because it w- wasn't declared a terrorist attack, which it was. And maybe they said something about it has to be overseas. All right, that's fine. You know what? Commander-in-chief, executive order time. Yeah, he's really good at those. You know? But uh, anyway, 
Had to bring that back in my memory. Um, Chuck Hagel and uh, Brennan aren't doing so good, man. I thought they'd be confirmed by now. It's, that was what this Brennan is getting held up for over that drone question. Brennan, Brennan's horrible anyway. I mean, we talked about him last week. I, like I said before, I honestly believe that Obama threw in Hegel and Brennan knowing that they were going to get refused. Oh. Knowing that there's no way that the Republicans are going to, are going to, to give them a pass. And then th he's turning around and go, look, the Republicans won't do anything. You know, it, it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that it, I, I don't know if you watched it. Did you watch any of the confirmation hearings? Yeah. That Hegel was terrible. Yeah, he was. Terrible. And Brennan, the facts are getting his way. His own video gets it his way. All you got to do is put Ted Cruz up there and let him get on YouTube, and he'll take care of take care of Brennan. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. Brennan's uh, Brennan's not good. But the thing is, if Obama had his team in order, we couldn't stop. Oh, that's a sixty vote deal. Is that a sixty vote, or do they have to? Do they just need a majority. I don't, well, I don't know. it has to be both houses. No, it's just it, the Senate. Senate confirmation is all they need. Well, uh, apparently, uh, they, they, they interviewed they get Democrats to vote for these guys. Um, I, I know there's some that won't. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't like. Brennan was a very big drone guy. He's daddy drone. He's the one that started the drones. You know, and he, he's very, uh, he will not answer Rand Paul. Rand Paul asked him if the president thinks that he has the authority to use a drone strike in the United States territories. And Brennan answered him, uh, well, we've never done that, and we don't have any intention of doing that. And Rand Paul said, okay, that's not what I asked you. Yeah, that's not the question. <laughs> you know what I mean? And wrote him a letter, and it's like, you're not getting past me until you do, until you say something on this. And I thought that was, I like his principle, I do. Uh Rand Paul's been really good during all of the hearings that I've watched, and I've watched a bunch. I watched him with uh, Hillary for the Benghazi thing. I've watched him. I can't believe know, she got the, away with that. During the confirmation hearings, I've watched him, and and Rand Paul's been pretty good. Uh, Ted Cruz, like you said, is really good. Uh, Lindsey Graham has surprised both of us. Yeah. In, in the Hegel thing, uh, and that's not something that I would have thought of. You know, six months ago. No, I couldn't uh, stand the guy. I might, matter of fact, he's still on the uh, the replace list on the website. I still haven't taken him off because I want to wait a couple months and let him screw up again. You know, because he's the one that says that we should limit freedom of speech. You know, when it comes to certain things, and that's just an unacceptable statement, man, from a senator. It just is. Well, he's the reason I got out of the military when I did. Really. I was uh, I, I got out under the Graham Rutman Hollings uh, Strength Reduction Act. Yeah, I remember all that. Yeah, because I was in. I I only had to do three years because I had enlisted. But you know, if you recall, I, that was part of my earlier statement. If you recall, during that, that was one of the things that led to balanced budgets, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And the, remember, the world was going to end. Mm -hmm. The same exact argument that they're having right now, they had back then about Reagan. Or about. But the, yeah, but the thing was, Reagan was smart enough to do it the right way. Oh yeah. Instead of instead of just saying, okay, we're gonna slash, you know, all this money, you know, and we're not gonna, you know, paint the boats or whatever. I remember Graham Redman was a dirty word, but when I was oh, in the yeah. service. Oh yeah. And the same with me. And um, I, I wasn't I wasn't old enough to know what I was talking about, but I remember it it striking well, a nerve. Yeah. Well, what they they did basically was they came out, and I had three years in. And they said, you have a choice. You can re-enlist or get out. And I'm like, well, you know, is this going to impact my discharge, you know? Because I, I enlisted for four years. I'm, I'm going to total, I'm going to end up serving three. Is that going to impact something? And they said, no. They said, we don't really care about that. Um, you're going to get a, a, you know, honorable discharge and the whole nine yards. So I said, okay, fine, because I had no intention on reenlisting. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't re-upping at all, but I was going to do my, you know, do my duty. I, I signed yeah. up for four. I was going to do four, and uh, Graham Rutman said, no, you, you, you're either going to re-enlist for another four, so I would have done seven, uh, or uh, you're going to get out, and I, I'm out. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there's one more addition to our media conglomerate. Now, we've put together a, a newspaper called the SCR Beacon uh, for your 
uh, reading pleasure on Fridays that comes out. So I got to figure out a dest or a de destination the de distribution system for it. But I'll put it up on the Facebook page and the we'll figure it out from there. But that's just a bunch of our good aggregators that uh, are all collected throughout the week, and then they'll be posted on Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, your weekly Jihad Report for February 16th through February 22nd. 41 Jihad attacks, 5 Alwa Akbars, 321 dead bodies, 736 critically injured. The religion of peace, ladies and gentlemen, one body at a time. Now there's bodies dropping in Chicago, too, I guess. Yeah, uh, apparently there was a teen who was shot just af hours after Obama gave a gun control speech. It's a uh, it, and it was an 18-year-old girl who was shot in North Chicago. Her name was Janae McFarlane. And reports indicate that the bullet with which she was shot was actually intended for someone else. No way. Imagine that. It, no, wait. No, Hutch, that can't be right. Because guns aren't allowed in in Chicago. That's right. So how how exactly did she get shot with a bullet that was meant for somebody else again, in a place where guns are illegal? Again, the argument requires that the people listening to the argument must be stupid. It requires it. This would this would make me mad if I was a Democrat. That in order for me to go along with what you want me to do, Mr. Democrat leader, I have to give away my intelligence and my uh, common sense. That would piss me off. If some Republican came to me and tried to tell me that gun-free zones are good, I'm sorry, but that doesn't work. So there's a whole no, lot of... I mean, simple math tells you that. <laughs> I mean, it's it, we're not talking about, hey, we want you to you know become a nuclear physicist. No, this is simple math. This is one and one equals two. If you have guns... And you have a gun-free zone. Said bad guy with a gun, it will take carry it into a gun-free zone, and make it a killing field. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are a Democrat and you like Democrat leaders, just understand that they are allowing you to be killed more than you should be. I mean, if you would, I can't even go there. I mean, it's just uh, we've posted on it, talked about it a thousand times. The only good part about it is is that I'll bet you if you racked up, and this is going to sound heartless, but I'll bet you if you tallied everything up, there's a whole lot more Democrats getting shot than Republicans. There are a whole lot more. I mean, just a vast amount more. That's what, that's what we should do. We should, we should try to get a statistic like that and say, here, here, look. Look, it, this is you, and this is us. You know? Jeez, man. Oh, by, by the way, before we go on, did you see the the thing where our Justice Department has decided to join a lawsuit against Lance Armstrong? I did. I did. That's ridiculous. Among other things that they've done. I mean that 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 department right there. If any if we ever get out of this mess, if we ever because I don't know who knows what's going to happen in 2016. But if Maybe we that's if, what they should do with sequester is just get rid of the fucking Justice Department. It's save I, a ton of money. I'll tell you. And I mean they're useless. You know they say because I remember when Bush abdicated or whatever when he gave office to Obama when he resigned what's it called when you get out when he, anyway when, when Bush or when Obama took over one of the first things that Holder wanted to do was to investigate the Justice Department of the Bush administration and this big thing went up about we don't do that da -da 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 -da. well you know what if we get back in charge then this 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 Justice Department needs to be investigated this is the most illegal, criminal-ass bunch of people from Chicago I've ever seen in, in a Justice Department. I mean, uh, Janet Reno was bad. She was bad. Uh, with the kid from Cuba and the, and the uh, Waco and Ruby Ridge, it was horrible. But this guy, it's every day. Yeah, the difference is, I mean, e even as bad as she was, uh, you know, it was very... I, I I don't know I, I don't want to make it to downplay it because that the the stuff that you're talking about was all um, high profile, you know that that and, and it was unnecessary. It was unnecessary. 
Yeah. They could have. It was unnecessary. You're absolutely right. However, the difference is her screw-ups played out on national TV, whereas holders aren't coming to light. Yeah, that's true, too. And it's the fact that the media refuses to report on the, the fact that, you know, Holder, you know, they they refuse to report on Fast and Furious. They refuse to. Re well, Benghazi has nothing to do with the Justice Department, but I mean, it, it's one of them things where, you know, at that time the uh, the media was left leaning, but they didn't lean far enough to the left that they refused to report. Right. Yeah. Now, they were on it. It was on there all the time. Yeah. I mean, when 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 she had them going into uh, into Waco. I mean, it was every news channel carried it. Yeah. You know, uh, but now I think that that Waco could happen, and with this this new oh, media, I don't know, man. I know it's no, changed you'd so never much. Hear about it. I mean, we we lived through as adults the Clinton administration, and it was uh, it leaned a little bit left. It leaned a lot left, but it it didn't omit stuff. I mean, once because that's when Drudge came on the scene. Then once Drudge came on the scene, they were like scrambling. And making sure that they covered stories. I mean, they weren't covering them as a, enthusiastically as we would have liked, but there wasn't any Fox News yet, and we heard about the stories. Yeah, I mean, Monica, the whole Monica right. Lewinsky thing was because of, Dr of Drudge. But that uh, Drudge is what brought Monica, made Monica Lewinsky a home, uh, you know, vice, a household name, and vice versa. Yeah. Uh, now we had a little debate last week about uh, Ben Carson. And whether he was an aberration or, or, you know, everybody was just wishing. Well, there's a little bit of proof out there that the uh, <laughs> the left is scared of this guy, Ward. They're freaking scared. Uh, and, of and, and we said that. They're we, circling yeah. the wagons, man. They're trying to pull everything out. They're trying to pull Alinsky's rules for radicals on this guy. I mean, he did the, here he comes, daring to defy the unspoken apolitical taboos as keynote speaker at the prayer breakfast. Right in the very hallowed presence of the one we have been waiting for, unabashedly exposing the myths. So they're getting out there, and they're going to circle around and try to, they're going to hire detectives and everything else. And this guy's just chuckling, man. He's like, bring it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the same thing as what happened with, um, with uh, Mitt Romney, right? Because, I mean, that's Obama's M.O., yeah. Always has been. He's gonna he's gonna go in and he's gonna figure out a way to attack you, and he's gonna attack your 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 lifestyle. He's gonna attack something. Yeah. And, and he's gonna go after you like a rabid dog. And and he did that with Romney, except for the fact that Romney's a true practicing Mormon and basically said, "Come get you some." And I got, I don't have nothing to hide. And and I think that, that Dr. Carson's going to be the same way. He's going to. He's already basically said, "Yeah, bring it." I don't have nothing. The, I don't only, have the, the only thing is, is then you got to worry about you know if they do a Herman Cain on him or or a, uh, Justice Thomas and a, you know Inventa and Anita Hill or the other girl. But I don't think it plays well with this guy. I think this guy is too. You can look at him and he didn't cheat a day in his life. He never cheated at cards. Yeah, but what they're going to do is they're going to find some some disgruntled mother who's oh, yeah. you know who, whose kid died because you know uh, Carson you know didn't uh, you know it was a misdiagnosis or whatever you know or she was bent because her kid died. I think he can beat it though. I do. We're gonna have this. Gonna be... Well, I mean, you know that's going to come out. The reason I is mean, because it, that's the same bullshit that came out with Romney. How. You know, Romney, Bain Capital closed, you know, wouldn't give this woman insurance, so her kid died. And it's like, wait a second, Romney wasn't even there when that happened. But I don't think you but can they, turn they around they and do it again now, so close. You know, I think that we've done this so many times. Usually they spread it out. But this has been done, like, how many times in a row? You know, where they were in the same way with the crisis, with the money. It's like we've been in about 16 crises since this guy took over. Well, you remember what, what Rahm Emanuel said. Man. Yeah. Never let a good crisis go to waste. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this next story is too lengthy for me to get completely into, but I would uh, highly recommend that you go to the show notes links page at steelcityresistance.wordpress.com because this is a chilling story that I've been seeing little bits and pieces of, but I never really saw it written about. Uh, it's called Clearing Away the Rubble with Blackhawks tanks and loads of ammo. And I didn't realize 
that this was so widespread. But if things are so peachy, I have a question for the president. What's with the Black Hawk helicopters and urban warfare drills? The Army took over an empty high school in southeast Houston without any warning last month in a Department of Defense drill. I mean, the residents were terrified. They're shooting blanks out of the out of the damn helicopters. And I mean, uh, the, the cartridges, the casings are landing on stuff. Uh, they had a city council meeting the next day, and the mayor decried a shocking lack of sensitivity to community concerns that caught even some in the police department by surprise. You know, and it's uh, about the same time council members were meeting in Houston, federal law enforcement agents were rappelling down ropes from military helicopters hovering above the Capitol in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Days earlier in Miami, one local news station reported that blanks fired from Blackhawks soaring low over downtown were pinging off the high-rises, and another reported troops repelling from the military choppers onto the Metro Rail Station platform. The official explanation, the training is designed to ensure the military <coughs> personnel are able to operate in urban areas and to focus on preparations for overseas deployment, which is totally bullshit. Uh... A reader claiming to be a former Marine commented on the CBS Law and Los Angeles News website that he was an infantryman for 20 years and never trained in any city or town with civilians present. And I've been on many bases, and almost every one of those bases has a range for this. You know, this isn't something you do in the city. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's very similar to what they do for, for training firemen, right? Exactly. I mean... They'll go in, they'll build up a mock building, you know, with windows and, and, and it's probably, you know, usually configurable so you can have movable walls on the inside. So you can lay out different, you know, scenarios so you don't see the same thing every time and have them egress that building. But you never have, you know, people flying into, you know, for example, into downtown Pittsburgh. Yeah, this is, this is different. Yeah. I mean, and, and here's the other thing too. Now, think about this. You don't know that the guy shimmying down that rope's a cop or or an army guy. The other thing is... All you see is a black helicopter with a guy jumping out the door. Why are they together? Think of the Constitution. Think of of the Constitution. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They are not supposed... They're not supposed to work together like that. They have two different functions, and that's what's alarming. And if you're in the the range of this show, and we we have listeners from all over the place... So contact your congressmen, your senators, find out why. Get an explanation. Somebody should be jumping up and down about this in Congress. I was thinking about this today. This Republican Party, I mean, this is something, things are happening that never happened before, and I don't hear a whole lot of blowback. Now, I think they're I think they're on, a, they're still on vacation, right? They'll come back Monday or something? I, I believe it's Monday, yeah. Because they got like four days before the bottom falls out and the everything's over. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, that that military and the, that, that bothers me, man. I just uh, I don't like that at all. That's 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 I don't like that. No, that ends. I, that, I, I I agree. The country ends. I mean, that's that's the end of it. It's over if that happens. I mean, and now in London, they're experiencing some difficulties because all of the white people are leaving. This place is becoming a Muslim enclave. I mean. From Muslim immigration to white flight to an Islamic Republic of London in just 20 years? We are 10 years into this frightening transformation, but in the last 10 years, more than 600,000 white Britons have fled their former towns in London for less violent, less hostile, less Muslim, Asian as they call it in the UK. They don't even call it Muslim, they call it Asian. They're so damn afraid. Uh, areas. So that's a lot of people, ladies and gentlemen, and... I was going to post a story about Wichita. It was either Wichita or Kansas City. Uh, go to Bare Naked Islam. It's on there. You can find it. Uh, it's, it's one of those two. But this is happening at a, in a much late, lower scale, lighter scale, in Kansas. And that was that was the reason that I that I put that on there. Now, what I would suggest you do, whenever we post anything from Bare Naked Islam, there are several embedded links within the article. And we only we only paste the text when we're uh, doing the show. But if you go to the link, all the videos will come up and everything. And there's a, a extensive amount 
of uh, information about this in, in London, and it's really sad. It really is. I mean, well, Hutch, this goes back to what Doctor Carson said during the um, during the prayer breakfast, right? I mean, he came out and basically said, you know, you this political correctness is going to destroy us. It has to stop. And, and that's what, and we've been saying that on the show. That, that's since, one of the tenets the show came up. Yeah, that's I mean, one of the tenets of the show. I mean, that's one of the one of the things that we champion. Yeah, because the thing is, if you call a pig a pig, regardless what it is, you know, okay, you can live side by side with anybody. I don't care, you know, the guy next to me. I don't care what your religion is. I don't care what color your skin is. Mess with, I don't, mess with my I, dog, and we got a problem. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. And, and, you know, if I have a neighbor who, who's, you know, playing music all night, I'm going to go pound on his door and, and we're going to have a problem. But, and it's the same thing. The, these people, instead of speaking up and going, hey, look, you have a whole community of people who, who are trying to run us out of time. This is garbage. We're not going to stand for it. Yeah, and there are some people like that, but some of them just took the easy route. And, uh, and and bugged out. I mean. Well, that's what ends up happening is they don't they don't want to be the rabble roster. They 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 think that it's bad. And the government's for, not helping them. Speak your mind. Uh, and exactly. The government. the government. Because the government wants you to be politically correct. And oh, you can't you can't say that because they're Muslims. Hey, it's and, the and, same. And that's the religion of peace. It's the same and, here in this country. It's the same absolutely. damn way. Absolutely. I had a conversation. You can't say something to somebody because. If you yell at somebody, and, and it's it's not because the guy's a jackass, it's because he's black, or it's yeah. because he's a Mexican, or because he's a, you know, and you're being insensitive because he's had a tough life. You know what? I've had a tough life. Well, there's a, and I don't see where it's a problem for me to go out and tell, you know, call somebody on being a dickhead. I'm, I was in conversation with a, a certain local politician, uh, who I like. And but he was part and parcel of a, a bill, a meaningless bill, really, because the whole rest of the state's on board uh, about banning Sharia law in Pennsylvania. And our fine city decided that we had to throw a unanimous thing out there to go against that because it wasn't fair. And I, uh, you know, asked him about it and he's staying for, you know, to give the guy credit. I'm not going to mention his name. To give the guy credit, he stood up for what he said. But I was like, dude, don't you know that they want to kill us? Man, this isn't a religion. Man, this is <laughs> it's got religion in it. Man, I'm coughing my butt off. But it's not a religion. And uh, his answer to me was, have you ever gone to a mosque? Let's go to a mosque. Uh, how is that anywhere near, you know, <laughs> You know what? I haven't I haven't been in, in into the uh, ovens in Auschwitz either, but I don't think I'd want to go there either. Um, so no, uh, you're you're walking into a place where nobody in there fucking likes you. I don't give a shit what they say because it's okay to lie to you because you're an infidel. You are the enemy. Get that until you get that that one tenant of their entire religion into your brain. You're going to think, oh, they're, they're, they're good people, and, and most of them are good people. No, most of them aren't. Most of them freaking hate you because you're an infidel. Their religion teaches them that if you don't believe in Islam, you are an infidel and you deserve to die. One of the most outstanding things that ever occurred was them hiding this for so long. I mean, I only found out about this a couple of years ago. I used to think they were cool, too. No, but it goes it, it goes back to the same thing we're talking about there, Hutch. It's the same thing over and over and over again. It's you know you can't be politically correct. You got to call a pig a pig, and until somebody stands up and starts doing that, other than us, I mean, more people have to stand up and say, hey, you know what? And you have to be willing to go out and call bullshit on something that's not right. And you have to be able to, or you have to be willing to do like Hutch did, is approach these local politicians or bigger politicians and say, why are you allowing these people to come and step on my rights? Why are you allowing, you know, because if, 
for example, if Sharia law were to pass in this country, I don't give a shit what they say. You know, the, the mosque might be lovely and it, it might have all kinds of polished silver and whatever. And yeah, it's beautiful. The bottom line is it's a place where people meet that want to kill you. You know, I sent them the way I responded. I sent them a report. It was a poll of 100 mosques that they visited. You know how many mosques had no violence prone literature? 19%. 19%. That's how I, that's what and I that, asked what I asked the guy. I said is right. our, I said is our is our uh, mosque in Pittsburgh is it one of the 19%? And I said him he never replied. But uh yeah, I'm having none of it. I'm sorry. I'm not buying that shit. And like you said, we have to have the conversation. It's a vital conversation. We have to get this is not a left or right issue. Democrats, you got to come on board with this or either you got to turn Muslim. It's up to you, one or the other. You know, if you don't want to be they're a they're going to make you. Yeah, if you don't want to be a Muslim, you better join. We better get together on this. You know, I, I would highly suggest that you uh any of your left-leaning friends, all you have to do go out and and do a Google that says Muslim Sweden, Muslim Denmark. That's all you need to do. Put those two words in. Muslim France. And you will see a plethora of just terrible, terrible stories. I mean, the, 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 such a great word. the rape in, in, like, Sweden it was non-existent before they got there. You know, they commit 99% of it. Yeah, well, there's also a story that we just posted on uh, on the Facebook page about this young kid who was beaten with a bat and a tire iron by a group of Muslims in Greenwich Village in mid-January. How heck, how come that hasn't been in the news? It was, but they didn't say Muslim until two weeks later. Oh, okay. They just made it to a, like a group, you know. Yeah, it was a gang beat. Uh, they this. do that all the time. There was a there was a lady that cut her three kids, slit their throats, and left them. And I, I couldn't find the Muslim connection to that, but I'll bet that comes out in the next couple of days in London. It was either London or Paris. Paris. So that'll be coming out in the next couple of days. She was Muslim. Uh, Thomas Sowell has a, an article in there about guns and pensions you can check out. Uh, Ward, you had one more about uh, Media Matters? Yeah, uh, it just came out but based on tax filings that Media Matters is actually owned by, wait for it, dun, 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 George Soros. We, we talked about this almost a year ago when we said that Media Matters worked for Soros and nobody could find a link and blah, 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 blah. Well, the link came out and George Soros's Open Society Institutes uh, basically owns Media Matters. So when you get something that says, well, Media Matters says this, that they, could ju they should just start saying, and the next thing that comes out of my mouth is going to be a total and complete fucking lie. Media Matters said. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'll tell you, if you look at, uh, I think it's on our website. If it's not, I'll put it there. Uh, but if you look at Follow the Network, was it Follow the Networks? I believe so. The, the thing that... Uh, David Horowitz. Yeah. Soros is into so many different things. This guy, I can't believe somebody hadn't taken him out yet. But uh, he's into a lot. He really is. He's into the Tides Foundation. He's into things that are good. I mean, I don't know that they're 100% good, but I know a gentleman that uh, helps the old people, helps elderly people. He's pretty elderly, too, but but he helps them, and he's always asking for, you know, can anybody help? And I looked into it one time. I'm like, dude, man, that's Tides Foundation. I'm not touching that with a 10-foot ball. You know, you might be getting a nickel, but somebody else is getting the other 95 cents. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. He, he mixes it. He did the same thing with the Iraq Association of IAVA. IVIA, whatever, the Iraq Veterans Association for America or something. Yeah. And it's like, I looked into that, and I can't, I think they washed it by now. But that was getting Soros money. Yeah. He, he, he's not a nice person. No. You know, I mean, if you really want to get into it, he was one of the guys that ratted out Jews. Yeah. And, and uh, his, what was he, hungry? Yeah, in Hungary. I think it was you know, Hungary. He, he was ratting them out to the Germans. And he's a Jew. Yeah. 
He, he's a piece of shit is what he is. He is a rich piece of shit, too. There's countries where he's wanted. Singapore, I think. He's he's dusted off some economies. Yeah, because that's what he does. I think he did it in England, didn't he? Yeah, and he's he's trying to do it here. It's a wonder nobody, they don't have it. And nobody here will call him on it. It's a wonder that they don't, uh, like like British MI6 or whatever, that doesn't just freaking drop in in a chopper and snatch his fat ass. Yeah. You know, you'd think. But, uh, who knows? Anyway, join us. Uh, check out our website, steelcityresistant.wordpress.com. Check out the SCR Beacon. It's the companion to the show. Uh, Yet another companion. Yeah, we got to have some companions. We, uh, we have all kinds of companions. Facebook's cooking. Steel City Re or Facebook.com slash Steel City Resistance. Uh, SCR TV at... SCRTV at live.com for the email. And uh, it just keeps going and going. Download yeah. the, you know, subscribe to the show on iTunes. Check Steel it out. SteelCityResistance.wordpress.com. All that Twitter. Mess. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have all kinds of stuff. We're like big, great Ma big octopuses. Magnates. We're going to be octopi. Somebody. I don't know. <laughs> we, we, we got a bunch of tentacles in a bunch of places just doing a bunch of stuff. And that's what we do. Start sending us some money. <laughs> well anyway thank you ladies and gentlemen for letting us into your life for an hour and listening to my terrible voice and you probably saw a lot of coughing on the video I was dying the last 10 minutes we got through her though uh, Ward you got anything else for the nation no sir I'm over and out okay ladies and gentlemen thank you very much we'll catch you next week <laughs>